So give us a sense, Michael, where this business is right now. Let's keep it in North America for the moment. Uh, you know this so well. Uh, as I say, we had a peak a couple years ago. It's come down off of that some. Uh, do you expect that to continue to decline in terms of overall vehicle sales? Well, the industry's in a very good place. Um, while I expect new vehicle sales this year to decline somewhat, about 2%, and so far this year, that's exactly what's happened with retail sales. Fleet sales are up 6%. Um, the big story is the continued shift of the mix towards trucks and SUVs, with passenger car sales down 10% uh, so far this year, and truck-based vehicles up 10%. Uh, it's absolutely a, a phenomenon with truck-based vehicle sales approaching 70% of the mix, uh, something that's never been uh, achieved before. I think it's a permanent shift yeah. in American taste and values. They love the high seating position, the command position. Fuel economy of SUVs and trucks has improved dramatically, so there's not that much of a difference. Gasoline is still very affordable in America at under $3 a gallon. Yeah. And with fracking, we'll still have relatively stable fuel economy. So overall, it'll be a good year for the industry, even with some pullback in retail sales yeah, and, and uh, Mike, this year. And Mike, we certainly saw that with Ford announcing they're going down to two models of passenger vehicles actually in North America. But what about prices? Because for quite some time there was concern that as, as a, a large number of cars were coming off of lease, there would be a depressive effect on used car sales and they might trickle back up into new car sales. Are you seeing that? Oh yes, I called that out going into the year. We have four million off-lease vehicles returning to market this year because that's where all the manufacturers put the incentives year ago, years ago. And it pushed leasing into, in the United States to 30% uh, of the mix. Uh, and it's been there for a sustained period of time. Uh, so now you have a new choice for consumers, um, namely these nearly new vehicles at very attractive uh, prices. Yeah. So if you add it all together, the totality of the market, new and pre-owned, uh, it's still holding steady at, mm, you know, 55 million units this year, something like that. Uh, so it, it's still a solid market, but you can't expect new vehicle sales to grow with this new choice there for consumers in the marketplace. You know, Mike, I'm struck by the fact that perhaps we're reaching a peak where there should be perhaps even a greater decline in car sales. Right now, actually, uh, big major auto lenders have been increasing their auto loan originations uh, quarter over quarter. If you look at the first quarter of 2018 uh, versus uh, last year, we're talking Ally, J.P. Morgan, Santander. Meanwhile, Blackstone is accelerating its, uh, its entree into subprime auto lending. Is this the wrong time, and is this market setting up for a crash? No, there's absolutely no sign of a crash whatsoever. And if, uh, if you look at the different uh, credit debt profiles in the U.S., the only one I would be concerned about is student debt. There's a, it's uh, way too high and, and all kinds of structural problems in it. But when it comes to auto loans, and we saw this during the, the true great crash of 08, 09, which was a financial crash, uh, consumers uh, very much want to pay for their car. They want to be able to get around. They want to be able to go to work. And they'll, they'll pay for their car before they pay for their, for their home. Now, when it comes to subprime, you have some bad apples who have done too much. But it's not a systemic risk whatsoever. And if I look at our business, subprime only funds 5% of our uh, sales. So it's a relatively small part. But in principle, credit is very much available for the auto buyer, very much affordable and the American consumer is is paying uh, their monthly car payment. So if I look at AutoNation, uh, we announced our quarterly results uh, today. We had an all time record uh, best first quarter at a dollar and one cents per share with driven by revenue of five point three billion. Uh, and uh, all our AutoNation brand initiatives are uh, being embraced by consumers with an increase in our pre-owned gross profits of 9% compared to a year ago and in customer care up 5% and in our financial products a solid 10% gain. So, Mike, what about rising interest rates, the fact that it's going to get more expensive for people uh, to borrow money over time? Will this eat into, uh, into auto sales at all? 
Well, as I already said, uh, credit is available for car loans and it's very affordable. You know, let's have a little history lesson here. I've been in this business uh, coming up on 50 years. I can, I can remember 20% uh, floor plan uh, uh, inventory costs. So uh, yes, rates are, are going to go up yeah. somewhat. Uh, they still are extremely attractive. The American economy is not in a crisis. We need to move off of the crisis rates that were in place. So I think it's entirely appropriate, expected, and manageable yeah. uh, that the Federal Reserve increases interest rates. And I think they're doing it a very uh, prudent, transparent, uh, predictable way, yeah. uh, which is very healthy for the U.S. economy overall.